The 2022 Yu-Gi-Oh! Year in Review. Throw an ultra ball at this video so that we can be nice and hard and not flaccid and soft. You have been on a journey with us, you beautiful New York ultra ball bastard. I really love my trip to New York that I took in 2019. But with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Year in Review because the format's basically over. So, ah, uh, let's dive on into it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy for almost one year now that boo boo stain off of that subscribe button <laughs> so that we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I love saying that in my intro. It's fun. It's, I'm going to brand it. I'm going to put a patent on that word boo boo stain. <laughs> so, Ladies and gentlemen, this year of Yu-Gi-Oh! in review, I want to take this time to just talk about everything that's been going on in Yu-Gi-Oh!, how much the power creep has just exploded like a power level out of Dragon Ball Z or Super, I cannot wait for that new anime, and talk about where the channel has come. Because as I've talked about multiple times on this channel, I've been doing Yu-Gi tubing off and on for like over 10 years. Like I started this channel, I think like back in 2008. And there's still videos that are like 10, 11, 12 years old on this channel. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And, you know, it's interesting to see the progression of, you know, my channel over the years. And, you know, just see that I didn't really know what I was doing tonight. I feel like I kind of know what I'm doing. You know, I don't really know much about search engine optimization, but now I actually know how to do tags for my videos so that they actually show up in a search result. And really, it's interesting to see where Yu-Gi-Oh! has come for my channel. Personally, don't worry, I'm going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! in a little bit. I just want to get the channel stuff out of the way. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to cover it in like a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode. I want to make sure that everybody saw this so we could also talk about what's been going on with Yu-Gi-Oh! And really, it's been interesting with what has happened to my channel in particular. Because I remember I had been on medical leave for a couple weeks uh, before I made this video called The Future of Yu-Gi-Oh! This Channel and More. Posted December 21st, 2021, 26 views, zero comments with two likes. And it was a three minute, nine second long video. I put some music on the background of it. And then the next video I posted was on December 31st with almost 2,300 views. Now the GOAT format retrospective. And the channel just started taking off. I had posted on Capital G's channel sometime back. And I got to like over 700 subs. But then a couple years prior, like in 2019, I think before COVID hit, I had posted a video talking about how my Yu-Gi-Oh! My Yu-Gi-Oh! career is over for now. And that was because I was going into my full-time job working at a local television station in my area. But then when I went on medical leave and I posted this video, the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! The channel and more, by that point, I had lost a lot of subs. I was at just over 600, like 640, 645. So I had to build my audience back up. So basically, within just less than a year, we've gained over 400 subscribers. I would say about 400 to the dot. Because if what? We were at 640, 645 and we're at what? 1,040, 1,041 now. So like that, that's a big increase for a year. Like, you know, that's not 90,000 subs in a year level of increase, but still it's increased regardless. Our channel is now monetized. I'm able to put my funds that I get through this channel to help put towards paying off my medical expenses. And you may be thinking, well, Avery, your medical expenses are probably thousands of dollars. Maybe, I'm not gonna disclose that obviously, but regardless, every little bit helps. And I've had people say to me, Avery, you know, why don't you set up a Patreon? Why don't you do something like that? And I don't want to feel like I'm putting my content behind a paywall, right? And so I feel like it's better to just, you know, if people want to support the channel, you can hit the super thanks button where like you can donate whatever amount and then leave a comment and stuff. And you don't have to do that. Make sure that you and your family and all that are taken care of before you even wanna donate to me. You know, don't don't think that like I'm gonna be living out of a box in like a couple weeks. I have made some investments in my time when I was younger that have paid off well. Um, so, you know, I'm still somewhat a good amount of time away before I'm just like looking at my bank account like, oh shit, I'm broke. You know, like there's there's not anything to have to worry about in that regard. I'll put it this way. I, I would not be spending damn near $1,100 on a case of Power of the Elements if I was worried about my bank account. <laughs> so like, don't don't think you need to worry about me. If you want to support the channel, you are more than welcome to, and I very much do appreciate it. Um, but just know that you don't have to. Take care of yourself and your loved ones first before you take care of me, because inflation, at least in the States right now, is a bitch. <laughs> like, Lord have mercy. I remember earlier this year, I was paying $6 for a gallon of premium gas. It was bananas. Um, but, 
you know, we're still doing the retrospective series somewhat. We were crapping on Master Duel, aka Master Shits, uh, on the channel for a while, which helped us get a lot of viewers. And really, I think I came back into Yugi tubing at the right time because we didn't have any events, like IRL events, because of COVID. And, you know, I've talked about it on the channel in the past about how remote duels, I think, are garbage. They're pretty much filled with cheaters. Uh, don't don't be going to a remote duel. It's just not worth it. And, you know, my channel didn't really do much because of it because there wasn't much really to talk about. And now that events are back, you know, Konami, Konami finally brought back Yu-Gi-Oh! events. This video posted on December 24th, 2021, 45 views. Three days later, I just started back up full swing into YouTube posting a video almost every single day. And it's paid off. And now looking at Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole, can you believe that at the beginning of 2022 this year, we got the grand creators. So the beginning of this year, we started off with the Brave Engine and it was tier one being played in everything. And now we're not even really seeing the Brave Engine being played in much. And then of course we had our four core booster sets being Battle of Chaos, Dimension Force, Power of the Frickin' Elements, and then Darkwing Boo Boo Stain because that set, it it's like, a taste test of what to get before we have Photon Hypernova, which is going to have Cash Tira. And, you know, a brand new Tier 1 deck enters the fray. Of course, we had the four structure decks this year. We had, like, the Crystal Beast structure deck and stuff like that. I'm not really concerned about that. Moreover, I'm concerned more about the whole power creep aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh! And, you know, our channel growing over 400 subscribers in basically less than a year. And now we're coming up to a brand new year. And... It's it's wild to see how much the game has progressed in a year, and it's wild to see where the channel has come in a year that, you know, I, I have people that are like, you know, they want me to open up a Discord channel, and like, they want to interact with me, and like, outside of that girl I matched with on a dating app a few days ago, like, ghosting me for a date, like, man, life's good, <laughs> and now I've got a new job in the wings where I'm going to be working at a local radio station in my hometown, I'm really looking forward to that. And life is good. I mean, the channel is doing great. And honestly, I'm excited for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, yeah, we're in a tier zero format. Things are pretty toxic right now, but it's going to work itself out. Mystic Mind got banned, for God's sakes. Like, let's take the time to be appreciative of that. You know what I mean? And I think that really the the way that Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to go is, is nowhere but up. And, you know, yeah, Cash Tira can lock out your monster zones, but we have so many hand traps now in modern Yu-Gi-Oh that I don't really feel like it's something that we have to worry about. I'm more concerned about having multiple banished piles and dealing with that baby back bullshit. But, yeah, Power Creep has definitely exploded more this year than in others. I saw a lot of people saying that uh, recently where people were like, man, Power Creep this year of Yu-Gi-Oh was a lot. And, yeah, when you look at it in... Uh, a vacuum you know you look at it from start to finish it did go up a lot you know we started off this year with the brave engine we were dealing with dragoons we were dealing with anaconda then we got dpe and it was like it was just never ending of just crap that just you just vomit on the board you drop your pants and just drop a dookie on the board like that's what Yu-Gi-Oh has become now and you know some people say that you know, it's, it's not the same as old school Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, this is when Yu-Gi-Oh! died, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still going strong. I mean, it's a build your board game. It's a build the castle, protect the castle game. And, you know, we're not in Edison format anymore where, you know, you put a pile of 40 or 60 cards or whatever together and that's your deck. You know, the closest we got to a good shit dot deck this year was uh, basically the Punk Synchro deck, which was cool to see because... It reminded me of, you know, honestly, Edison format to a degree where like, you know, you look at something like quick draw, you know, drill warrior, plant, shenanigans, whatever. That was basically a good shit dot deck. You just played good cards to help facilitate synchro plays. Uh, and now we've gotten to the point where we're playing a deck full of birds that just normal summon themselves with flunderies. And, you know, whether that's healthy or not is, of course, going to be up for debate. But I think that Yu-Gi-Oh! is on a good path right now where we don't have any different summoning mechanics. I think that we are summon mechanic out. <laughs> um, you know, they are more focusing on like giving us archetype support for like old stuff like Gate Guardian and stuff like that. And they're focusing more on bringing back a lot of older cards that have been on the balance for years and unbanning them. You know, I would be willing to make the prediction. In fact, this will be my bold prediction for the video moving into 2022. I think, or moving into 2023, excuse me. 
I think at, at some point in 2023, this is my bold prediction, at some point in 2023, I think we will see the remaining three Dragon Rulers unbanned. Now, I know what you're thinking. Avery Dragon Ruler was a tier zero deck. And I agree. But I think having all four of the big Dragon Rulers back at full power and having the baby dragons back, I don't know if it would really compete in 2023. I mean, we don't know... We don't know what Cyberstorm Access is going to have. That's our next core booster set after Photon Hypernova. And, you know, we get four core booster sets a year. Um, not to mention that we had some good side sets like Tactical Masters and I mentioned Grand Creators. Um, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. But if I had to make one bold prediction, I think it'd be that we would see the other three Dragon Rulers come back. I think that it would be fun to see Dragon Rulers back at full power. You know, we don't have Vanity's Emptiness anymore. So... I don't know. I could be totally off with that. I might look at this a year from now and be like, man, I was a fool. But I'm happy to be where I'm at with the channel. I'm happy that Yu-Gi-Oh! is still alive for another year. You know, it's been going strong basically since 2002 here in the States. And I don't see any signs of it slowing down. I think Master Duel, aka Master Shits, will be dead. Um, hopefully by the end of 2023 because that game is just hot garbage. And who knows? Maybe we'll finally get another world championship game but life is good the channel is doing good you know if i become a 100,000 subscriber channel one day great if i don't cool it doesn't really matter to me what matters to me is that i have survived another year the cancer hasn't taken me out and life is life is good i never thought i would be you know rubbing shoulders with you know bigger channels like neshi or making outros for people like m cole 40 and you know talking crap on the internet like it's fun and i enjoy the entertainment that i am able to give with you know this blunt type of persona where you know i just take on this blunt attitude towards the game and just you know make fun of it make fun of it for its flaws because i love the game it's a game i've been growing up with since i was like six seven years old you know playing on the floor of my books a million in my local town or playing on the floor in my house with my friends in second grade and with my dad and you know us going to events together and making all of the stories and the memories that i've made and all the friends that i've made you know shout out to valley d that we always shout out and read video you know it, he's he's like a big brother to me now and i didn't think when i first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh competitively i was going to meet someone that would be like a big brother and i've made a lot of good friends you know, do we hang out on a regular basis? No, but I mean, I feel like that's because Yu-Gi-Oh! has brought us together. That's like the common ground. Doesn't mean like we can't hang out and go to the bar or whatever. It's just that's the common ground. That's what we're mostly going to talk about because that's where our friendship, you know, spawns from. You know, we want to be able to focus on what brought us together. And that's really the positive of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Yeah, there's a lot of negatives, but man, I like to think that the positives outweigh the negative. So New Year's resolution for me, I think, is going to be that we're still going to be going strong with the entertainment. I think I want to take a more positive approach. That's not to say I'm not going to be negative about things and call shit out. I will, whether it's players or Konami or a little bit of both. Or if they release a garbage game, I'm going to talk about it. Or if they mess up, I'm going to talk about it. Not because I'm making fun of Konami. Not because I'm you know, trying to get people banned in the community or start drama. It's because I love the game and I want the game to be successful. So guys... Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Let me know down in the comments below what you think is your favorite memory of on this channel or even a favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! memory in general. Ah, and really quick before we end the video, someone did leave a comment on one of my videos saying, hey, have you thought about opening up a Discord channel? I'm working on that. I just, I don't know Discord at all. I, like, I'm, I'm a Skype guy, I'll be honest. I don't know Discord. I can barely even log into Discord. Like, I'm, I'm an idiot when it comes to Discord. I'm figuring something out with that. And, you know, please, please stand by for your future programming. <laughs> so, guys, please, thank you for watching. I love you very much. And I will see you in the next video.